Joel MD, also known as Dr. Bones of the medical preparedness website doomandbloom.net and co-author of the Survival Medicine Handbook, The Essential Guide for When Health is Not on the Way, and other New York Times and Amazon best-selling books. In my last video, I discussed the various aspects of radiation sickness, but I haven't yet defined just what radiation is. The definition of radiation is energy given off by unstable matter in the form of rays or high-speed particles. Put simply, radiation is divided into ionizing and non-ionizing versions. We're bombarded daily by radiation from multiple non-ionizing forces, the sun's visible light and heat, microwaves, radio waves, radar, and others. This type of radiation deposits energy in the materials through which it passes, but it doesn't break down molecular bonds or destabilize atoms. These effects, however, can be caused by ionizing radiation where the atom becomes charged and unstable, not a healthy state for living cells, that's for sure. Now, there are several types of radiation given off by a nuclear weapon, alpha, beta, and neutron particles, and gamma and X-rays. Now, all of these are caused by unstable atoms, which in order to reach a stable state, must release energy in the form of radiation. Atoms can do this by, for example, shedding electrons, which causes them to become ionized. Alpha radiation occurs when an atom undergoes radioactive decay, giving off an alpha particle. Due to their charge and mass, alpha particles only travel a few centimeters, don't even penetrate the outer layer of the skin. If ingested, inhaled, or somehow injected, however, alpha particles are capable of causing considerable damage to living cells. Beta radiation takes the form of particles as well. Due to the smaller mass, it's able to travel farther in air than an alpha particle, but still can be stopped by a thick piece of plastic or by a stack of paper or even clothing. It can penetrate a short distance into exposed skin though, causing beta burns, which may require treatment. However, the main threat still is from ingesting it, perhaps from crops growing in fallout areas. Gamma and X-rays, unlike alpha, or beta particles are two types of radiation that don't consist of particles at all, but instead pure electromagnetic energy. Think of gamma rays as X-rays on steroids. Gamma radiation can travel much farther through air than alpha or beta particles, which have mass, and is responsible for most ill effects on humans after a nuclear explosion or even a meltdown. It can, however, be blocked by various materials. The thickness required for each material depends on the density. You'll see various shielding options and thickness requirements described in our article on radiation thickness in an upcoming video as well. No, and I just wanted to say that there are examples of elements that are gamma ray emitters, and they include radioactive iodine, cesium-137, cobalt-60, radium-226, highly radioactive materials. Lastly, neutron radiation consists of high-speed particles with high penetrating power. Neutron particles travel farther in air than other forms of radiation, but can still be blocked by certain materials, materials that contain hydrogen, such as water, H2O, and concrete. When neutron particles are absorbed into a stable atom, they make it unstable and more likely to emit radiation. Therefore, it's the only type discussed in this video that can turn other materials radioactive. Although radiation is a major issue after a nuclear blast, it should be noted that most damage from such weapons are the result of massive amounts of kinetic energy generated by shock and heat waves. The blast kills people close to ground zero and causes major trauma much farther away. Flying debris, falling buildings account for even more casualties, and the heat is so intense that almost everything close to ground zero is vaporized. At a distance, the extreme heat still causes severe burns and starts firestorms. This is Joel and MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you need a solid medical kit for that wilderness hike, hunting trip, or even long-term survival, check out Nurse Amy's entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.